Hey guys, I wanted to take a minute to uh, explain a little bit about the TW and the wiring here. I uh, wanted to be able to black this whole thing out, um, so that way, you know, it's not all bright and flashing people's eyes and, you know, cruising around at night hunting snakes and all that sort of thing. And like it, I like to be able to dark it out at times. I also wanted to be able to add a GPS unit um, with switched power to it, so, <clears throat> excuse me, I only wanted it to come on and off with the key. So what I did is, oh, there's a trail dog, is uh, I dug in the brown wire here. This wire feeds directly to the key switch is the master hot wire. When you turn the key on and off, this is the switch power. So if you want to add something to it, you could do it here. Um, I'm going to end up switching to LEDs on this thing because you have to kind of keep everything balanced. Um, and my... GPS unit's very low anthrop, so I'm not super worried about having uh, adding it to this. You could add a relay using this to switch the relay on and off, and then hook the relay directly to the battery for higher amp load stuff. Um, I have a wire hooked up here for a... Oh, where is it? Everything's kind of madness down there. Oh, it fell down here. For a... Um, it's not a, it's not set up for a tender. It's meant to run a USB or a jump starter or something like that. So anyways, let's get to the guts of the video, uh, how to do the blackout lights. So anyways, the main wire coming off the key switch coming in here um, is switch power on and off. Um, it goes off in a couple of directions. Um, two kind of go forward here. Let's see so we can show you here. This one here goes up and splits. This does your front switch front front brake rear light tail light switch it does and your front marker running lights and the instrument cluster and I'll get about get into that here in a second this next one here goes to the switch here and that goes to your rear brake light rear brakes for the rear brake light rear brake system for rear brake light um, so those, I'll, I'll talk to you about that in a second. So that's where those ones go. Um, so that's these two wires. This wire here goes down into, uh, the CDI, or the, this is either the CDI or the rectifier too. If you look at the, the, um, schematic, it'll kind of explain it. I only dove into it as far as I needed to figure it out. Um, so anyways, that leads us to this magical wire. I was hoping that this the whole bike was powered off this single wire and that this last wire because all i had to, with these two cut all i had to take care of was the rear running light uh was on and my flasher was doing something weird because it was getting power in it backwards because the running lights weren't on so i, I knew i needed just to eliminate the flasher relay getting power completely so i was hoping to cut that and be able to eliminate power to the rear half of the system but it wasn't this i ended up i had to wrap i only had the wire wrapped about this far so far i was hoping to get just be able to do it all right here but no i had to trace this wire back down into here and it comes down in and splits this blue solid blue wire no stripe or nothing that's just your rear brake light so bam that got cut now this other wire that runs up here that's your um flasher light so bam that got cut so the next the only thing left that the only thing that's required to run the bike is this brown wire here that goes down into this dude ollie <clears throat> and like i said the other one goes in over here and this goes up to the rectifier and all that i'm not gonna figure out or try to explain any of that right now because i don't care um but to make the bike run you need power to this wire you need power to this wire that comes down into here. These two brown wires. That's what you need power to run. And when I say run, that means when this switch is on, this switch, sorry, this this key switch here, or the kill switch still works on the thumb. The start switch still works. But I've also, when I've done this, because I wanted to eliminate the stupid uh, side stance switch or whatever, because that's just annoying to me. I thought I was going to have to pull this off like my other bike, solder them two together. Apparently you don't. If you just pull it loose, unplug it, and you're happy, snappy, good to go. Um, I'll protect that somehow so I don't get full of crud if I want to go back. But anyways, um, so but with all that, with that disconnected, 
and everything else cut the way you see it here. The bike will start in any gear. Um, it doesn't uh, matter clutch, not nothing. It'll just start. So, you know, be on it. You've, you've eliminated all the safeties. You've also eliminated the neutral safety light up on the dash. Um, so it's blacked out. Like, and I'm going to have it set up. So the only thing that will be on would be my GPS. And because I could turn that on and off independently and then what's to run the bike. Um, so to get into that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this further here because this is just getting ugly. And I'm going to run this wire up to this wire and splice them together and splice that into my main switch power coming off my key. I'll also run a wire off through a small two ounce fuse to my GPS unit. And then off of that, I'm going to run up into either a heavy, heavy load switch. It's going to be kind of a big switch, so I probably won't do that. I'll probably run it into a smaller switch so I can mount up on the dash or up onto the instruments here. And uh, then I'll run a relay to, to switch this power on and off. The thing is, is I'm going to have to do like a double throw style, uh, swing, single switch double throw relay because... And I'm still really new to the way the motorcycle electronics work, so I'm kind of an automotive guy. But I'm pretty sure you have to keep the electronics and these things balanced. You don't want to, like, just suddenly if you switch all these lights off and it's supposed to have all this incandescent load on it of, you know, two, four, six, you know, minimum light bulbs running 1157s, they draw like an amp a piece. Um, you're running six, eight amps at a minimum. If you suddenly pull that off, and there's no, if this little regulator can't keep up or whatever, you could potentially cook your battery. Um, for short periods of time, you know, just a few minutes and stuff, you could probably get away with that. But I don't want to have that issue. I want to be able to, you know, be able to flip it off and run it. So my plan is, is I'll use a, um, I'll use a, use our, um, um, a ballast resistor, like an automotive for uh, early automotive when you didn't have uh, uh, a ballast resistor. <laughs> Early automotive stuff, I'm not going to explain that to you right now. Use ballast resistors, mid-70s and earlier, uh, or some sort of resistor, some sort of heat or amperage sink or whatever. Um, and I'm going to have to read or dive into that a little more to figure out how I want to do that. Um, yeah, so anyways, uh, this is an 18 bike, um, obviously by the colors and stuff. The, and this is what I had to do. So again, the bare minimum to make the bike run, you need this wire. You need a wire coming off of here, come down to power this guy to this brown wire here. You need brown wire coming down, swoop a doop a doop a doop, down into this thing. So those are the two wires that you have to get power to if you're just trying to get the thing running or whatever else. Um, and then everything else you cut. So yeah, good luck with it. Um, have fun. Enjoy. <laughs> just a TW. Can't help but smile, right? All right, guys.